Who was the first person to come across an eggplant and be like, that shit looks good? Because it does not. And then they cut it open and cooked it and it's not. So it's I don't know what really they were thinking. <laughs> no, it yeah. really isn't. But no, like absolutely what weird, the reason that we found out that you can render fat into soap yeah. is because they used to kill the animals upstream and they noticed if they washed their stuff downstream from where they killed the animals, it had like a weird white foamy thing that did a really good job getting, st- I don't know, like weird things in history. The first person to figure that kind of stuff out. Who was the first weirdo who took a chicken baby and uh, cracked it open into a vat of ground wheat and the stuff they squirted out of a cow and then baked it and made bread or whatever yeah. like what weird psycho yeah. was so bored that they invented bread like that is wild at least beer kind of makes sense like oh i left that out over there and it smells kind of rancid we got jonah to drink it on friday <laughs> got a dare and then he stumbled around delightfully and we're like oh yeah. let's try it yeah and then he just <laughs> laughed for three hours so yeah that's how they figured <laughs> right. out alcohol right? right like so then we did it again next week with a whole whole lot more <laughs> But I also think about the village. The village must have been like, did you hear the gossip? Yeah, like two doors down. Kevin took a bunch of wheat and some eggs and he mixed them all up. He stuck right. it in the fire and then he ate it and he ate. Right. <laughs> now he's looking for a name. Right. Just a time of invention, right? But then also, did you hear about Jonah two doors down? <laughs> Tried one of those mushrooms. Ooh, good to know. Don't eat those mushrooms. Those mushrooms are bad. <laughs> Welcome to Acceptance Criteria, where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of how software gets made and how we can all do a better job together. My name is Kevin Thomas Euland, and across the chat from me is Andrew Greener. Say hey, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. I set you up with the hey, Andrew, know, and you don't do you the did. hey, Andrew? Wow. You threw me off. Do it again. <laughs> Say it again. Say hey, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> We're also here to get deeper on the human elements. I could go on for an eternity about people and how they think about the process of building complex systems. And I can't think of two better people to do that than Kevin and I. Which is a scary thought and why we need more guests on this show. If you've got a topic you'd like to come discuss or rant about, drop us a note and we'll see if we can get you on a future episode. You can go to acceptancepod.com forward slash guest and submit your ideas. And a quick reminder, whether this is your first episode or you've been listening for a while, we wouldn't say no to your going and dropping five stars on Apple Podcast or Spotify and leaving us a nice review. And if you want to leave us a bad review, remember the name of the podcast is Pod Save America. You can also follow us on most apps. We're at Acceptance Pod. We'll post links to show notes and any articles from the blog over there. We're also building a community on Reddit at r slash acceptance criteria and on Discord. You can find links to both in the show notes and on the blog. And I promise we'll be moderating the crap out of them to keep it a nice little slice of the internet. On this week's show, we'll be talking about online scams from things that are just trying to screw you personally and what you can do to protect yourself and make sure the software you're working on isn't vulnerable or making your users vulnerable. I find this subject fun. Fascinating on every level. The the question that I was asking myself before we came on air was, do any of the scammers feel any remorse? Like, is there scammers remorse? Is that a thing? I can't imagine there is. I mean, there's definitely, there's degrees of this. If you're in a foreign country making five pennies a day on a thing and you're getting paid to do this kind of stuff, do you really care, right? Like you're in a completely different situation and I don't really judge those folks for finding ways to make money. There's people out there who are figuring out how to game all of the different algorithms and make themselves ad revenue against all of it. And I'm like, listen, yeah, actually, if you're in part of the world where you don't have the same level of middle class and everything else. I'm actually kind of like, cool, good enterprising on you. <laughs> I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm frustrated with the tech companies that enable you and the actual people in charge of doing these things. They're the ones who are who are pretty bad. But yeah, I would imagine you can't be successful doing these things and really, I assume they sleep well. I assume like mob bosses sleep well. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's weird because you got to assume at some point <laughs> 
one of these scammers read the article about the fallout of their scam, right? Sure. There has to have been a time when that happened. The interesting thing for him is it's it's an in a way it's a medium that it's easy to kind of disconnect your emotions, right? Because you if it's an email or an electronic scam, you're not necessarily even talking to somebody during the scam. So there's never there's never a human connection. If you're burgling someone someone's house, you're in their house, you're in their space. Sure. There's like an intimacy about it. But when you're scamming someone through like online communications you never you never in that moment where you have to actually even necessarily talk to them so how Maybe, human yeah. can they be right 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 i mean that is that is all of human history as soon as you can other people and not think of them as human then it becomes a lot easier for you to do those kinds of things and as soon as you think of it like oh they're that rich fat american who's living well in the you know golden land of opportunity and so me you know taking advantage of that person i can i can sort of dissociate from that and and think that that's fine i'll also i promise i won't i i was thinking about adding to the show notes i was like you know the biggest scam of all is wage theft and (laughs) corporations stealing money from people and going on a whole union rant but i won't do that this episode i'll keep capitalism off the list of massive scams even though it is i don't like what do you mean i don't even know what you mean you have you never heard of like tip theft and wage theft and the number of times that people don't get paid for their overtime their tips get routed i don't understand so corporations will find ways to like they'll tell you you can tip through the app and then they won't give the tip to the person there are ways that restaurants will have the tip come through the credit card and they'll pool that and they'll say that you know that's not like there's there's billions of dollars in things like tips not going to people there's billions of dollars in things like we made you work 60 hours and we didn't pay you overtime for 20 of those hours there's a bunch of cases where capitalism is absolutely stealing more money from people every day than any online scam is but that's a topic for a different episode that's interesting especially because yeah. the, the accumulation of billions oh yeah it's insane just google wage theft and the stats are pretty bad it'll probably just depress me probably not that this is the most cheery topic we're about to embark on for the next hour <laughs> well there is i mean the, we'll get into the, the the weird side of the coin on this okay yeah <laughs> but before we get to all of that let's take a short break and we'll be right back all right welcome back this is a segment we like to call market factors where we talk about industry news stories and trends we're observing mostly it's an excuse to rag on bad decisions and argue with each other whether some new piece of tech is worth it so today we're going to be talking about scams there have always been snake oil salesmen but technology has made it easier for malicious actors to swindle you out of your money or trick you into giving them information that will let them steal money from others we'll talk about how you can spot these scams and avoid them yourself and what you can do if you work in technology to ensure you aren't enabling these scams and attacks through your own lack of best practices or mistakes but let's Let's start with some of the stats on why this is such an important topic today. Yeah, so in 2023, it's estimated that Americans lost, and this was a record, $10 billion to scammers. $10 billion. That is a crazy number. It's a crazy number, and the number of things that, like, you could solve homelessness permanently with, like, $4 billion, right? Like, just the nu- the, the numbers here are insane. And yeah, yeah. It's a weird thing where I'm curious if we have in these stats, like, does that does that boil down to like the number of people that that has to be either relatively small amounts or surprisingly large amounts for a smaller number of people? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a weird one. And actually, in 2022, that's actually a 14 percent increase from 2022 as well. So it's it's getting worse. Great. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting worse, which is weird, too, because you think with all the, I guess, education, that's that's right. Most people get educated by getting scammed i guess right they're not searching like how can i avoid getting scammed when they right. when they jump online um but the ftc reported that the largest losses and this is probably where the the, the big the big scams are is the, the investment sure. scams which we'll get into in a little sure. while and that was that was 50 percent. that's 4.6 billion dollars of that money was through investment scams imposter scams were the second highest at 2.7 billion in losses and then other significant categories included bank transfers cryptocurrency scams are our favorite sub <laughs> I was um, say we covered that in a previous episode. Yeah, as online shopping fraud, business job opportunity schemes, which I have uh, first-hand experience with. So yeah. Should be interesting. The biggest breakdown is obviously 50%, almost 50% is investment scams. So this one we'll get into in more detail. And this one fascinates me because it's, I just look at the victims of this and no offense to them, but I'm like, man, you have, your investment, is you treat it like spare change. They part with big money very easily where I'm like, that's like all of my retirement money there that you just <laughs> yeah. played with. I am always curious. Like there's a, di- there's a difference between did 
did you... I don't know that I've actually ever bothered to go and read up the details. Was Bernie Madoff scamming the Elon Musks and the Bill Gates of the world? In which case I'm like, oh no, you lost $5 million. <laughs> what a shame. Or were they going after like, I don't, and even degrees of that, right? Yeah. Were they going after the local car dealership owners and oh no, you lost $5 million. That sucks. But you're also, those folks are doing just fine and they thought that they could put $5 million into a thing. They were assuming some degree of risk. Yeah, I'd be curious if we have a breakdown at some point of the investment scams and how often are you going after tricking someone into thinking this is a valid 401k alternative. And so I put $10,000 and that was all I had in savings. There's degrees of this, which I care more about (laughs) the lower the dollar amounts go, I think. So unfortunately, I think there's probably some pretty big investors. So yeah, rich people getting scammed. But I think it's probably also, judging by the, the, it's the older Americans, right? Age 60 and above. They're disproportionately affected and and considerably. So 3.4 billion in losses reported in 2023. So that is... And unless Warren Buffett got scammed for $1 billion, right. like that is most likely your group of right, right. 5,000, 10,000 small things. Yeah. And, and so you've got to assume in that group, there's people who are panicking about the amount of money they have for retirement, thinking mm-hmm. like, this is a quick way to... Right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're Did gambling, I get screwed right? by the 2008 financial crisis? My 401k took a massive hit and it was exactly. too late for me to do anything about it, right? Yeah. All of those situations. Although the most common types of those scams uh, in that demographic is tech support scams, investment fraud, so that would be on the biggest side, and then romance right. scams, which... Oh, that feels so sad. It like, are you, sad. like, taking advantage of a lonely 80-year-old and convincing him of something like that? Oh, yeah. oh I don't like that. Yeah, oh, the, no. the romance the romance scams, like, yeah. Ugh. Because th- that's hitting you twice, right? That's hitting you in the heart. <laughs> right, emotionally and, and the then... Yeah. Yeah. And so these figures, you know, it's scary because it's getting more sophisticated, right? So if if you've got a 40% increase from 22 to 23, the software is out there, right? And, and, and say education, there's not a ton of education, but there's literature and there's family. You hope your family is, is sort of saying, hey, you know, granddad, right. Right. that's not a good site to buy from, right? <laughs> right. But 40% is a pretty big increase um, from 22 to 23. So the sophistication yeah. is, is climbing. And obviously are opportunistic as well, right? So events, we talked about the cybersecurity company. CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike, thank you. So there's opportunities through events like the uh, CrowdStrike outage to then have a brand new scam. Right. I do think it's interesting that I've noticed sort of online discourse around uh, a lot of people, like especially Gen Z, who you don't, like you aren't, and this is one of those weird things where, uh, yeah, schools probably should talk about it. It's a little bit like sex ed, like it's a little weird that like we have to rely on schools to talk about it but we probably do of like how are you protecting yourself online are kids being taught about are we hoping you have parents who are vigilant enough to know this kind of stuff I don't know that there's a ton of like online literacy being taught anywhere to any age bracket and uh, yeah are you hoping that the grandkids are noticing uh, what's the likelihood I'm noticing the website grandpa shopping on pretty low especially with you know there's entire cultural situations in which you know depending on your culture you do have grandparents in the house with you that's more likely for you to notice it but a lot of white america doesn't work that way (laughs) and grandparents are on their own uh, and yeah i i don't know how we solve it but it's it's yeah that's interesting too because i was just thinking like it's similar to when you go to you uh, pick on a european country because it doesn't happen in the uk but it happens on the mainland (laughs) Uh when you you, you go in a city and and there's pickpocketers right so your travel company might say something they might say something on the plane you might have read in the travel books like hey be really careful don't put your cell phone on the the table but ultimately it, it's it's on you like hey be sensible right sure. so when you go online it's a little bit like that but then i start to think to myself the phishing scams where the domain name that's impossible right even as a techie i look at the domain sometimes and i'm like they could have bought this domain right it, it's not inconceivable that they bought this company name with this other word part of it dot it's very right. difficult and i don't i yeah so if i'm stumped as a techie there's a lot of older generation getting stumped so then it's like a moving time target i feel like now yeah you probably get into the point where you say yeah we have to have something built in that warns them actually that's right. probably i mean you would think browsers should be doing that we'll get into some of the stuff where like social media companies are relying on other companies to detect this stuff for them and it's like you 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 guys could do that right <laughs> like Ticketmaster could detect the fraud for itself but it chooses not to because it makes money off of the scams anyway but i do think there's even just weird so i got a, an email from apple the other day saying that the credit card and i know my credit card had expired and I just hadn't updated the thing but even then I like pasted
pasted the link in, didn't have, didn't do paste and go, just pasted it in. I was like, is it Apple? I literally copied Apple.com into Notepad and typed a one to make sure it wasn't like a capital I, I or know. a one for the yeah. L in Apple, right? Like I was, yeah. I was like, how do I actually make sure this is the thing that I'm doing? That's a great point for our listeners. It's not always, it's not always just a, a domain that's built with different pieces that that could be fake. It could actually just be one single letter that is a number. Like <laughs> right. Apple could have a one instead of the L. So it is it, right. like what you've done. Like I've done that myself where I've taken it in and I've broken it down. But where dogs, right? We're nerds. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is I'm surprised I, I, as I did it, I was like, I'm actually kind of surprised that my Chrome or Firefox address bar isn't in courier font where every letter and number is guaranteed to look like the one has the little feet and the little hat. So I know it's not an L or a capital I, right? Like I was I was kind of realizing actually that's kind of surprising why some of these browsers aren't doing stuff like that. It's funny too though because I, I think about like how easy it would be I know AI. But if I got an email, <laughs> if I got an email that that contained images that claim to be from a corporation, but the, the my my email provider is looking at the links in that email and saying none of these are actually part of the whitelist. None of these like right. we got Apple's we got Apple's domains right like and none of these and it could actually just tell me like you know <laughs> right. and, and I do get those warnings in Google like hey warning but I feel like you know but there's too much email them. marketing infrastructure we know this because of our industry background there's too much email in marketing infrastructure where for whatever reason reason you didn't want to bother with the setup time frame you couldn't get the dns configuration approval and so it's coming through like link tracker.net slash apple slash whatever and it's like no guys you needed to take the time to set up email marketing.apple.com and have the dns records sure you can point to your email service provider to do that but the dns google and outlook and all of these other things should be able to go and check like this link is registered to apple.com correctly that is a thing you cannot scam on the internet still so yeah there's just weird things that i'm surprised we aren't enforcing more of yeah and it, it, google it, and microsoft and meta all have exceptional power in this situation they could i mean google's been threatening to deprecate the third party cookie and decided not to but like google and firefox and microsoft and a bunch of companies decide we're going to just stop doing a thing in the browser in the email client companies would change their behavior so there's yeah. a little bit of like leadership that has to happen here yeah there's there's a lot people can do. There's a lot people can steal in a in a simple web form from you, especially yep. if you're you're not you're not from a tech background. So it makes sense. A lot of older Americans are, are probably right. Not even sophisticated scams. Even the even the least <laughs> least technical scams would tr uh, trip up a lot of people. Well, and I think that was so. There was an interesting quote from Kathy Stokes, the director of fraud prevention at AARP's Fraud Watch Network, and exactly right. Like internet and telephone scams are so exponentially more capable and the simplicity uh, compared to what a, uh, an older person who's less familiar with technology to them it looks very legit it looks very real and so the ability for scammers to go and do that is overwhelming police and prosecutors and people who have the ability to try and monitor and catch people and so just the volume of the attack surface for this situation makes it a law enforcement problem makes it likely that you know older Americans are going to get targeted by that and uh, there's this one example which I think is horrifying where they the scammers did a two-pronged attack on an 81 year old man in Ohio and basically tried to send an Uber driver to go and be a part of the scam oh, and yes. the 81 year old man like freaked out at the Uber driver showing up and, and shot and killed the person Yeah, that's and right. it's crazy what they're getting up to uh, like if you're an Uber Eats driver I like go pick up the order from Chili's and drop it on the front porch and walk away don't do like don't get involved in weird task rabbit style things because they're yeah. getting sophisticated and this is a gun loving country <laughs> Okay, so let's get to the common scams. Uh, yep. The classic one, the phishing scam, involves yep. sending fraudulent emails or messages that appear to come from a legitimate source like a bank or social media site. And the whole idea here is that they're, they're going to lure you in and steal sensitive information. The best information they can get is like your username, password, credit card details. And uh, yeah, these are the, essentially, as we said, it could be a very convincing looking email from Apple that has a, hey, you've right. got your password and, and they don't need much information 
information as soon as they get it, off, the, off they go. I will say, I don't know that I've ever actually gotten a phishing scam email, or at least it was so blatant that I was like, yeah, I don't have a FedEx package waiting for me, so I know that this is fake. But I have gotten dozens and dozens of corporate phishing tests to prove that I know how to recognize a phishing email. So I will say, like, it's a weird thing where the companies I've worked for at least have done the right thing, which is like get people used to knowing how to respond and report to phishing emails. But it is interesting, at least my anecdotal, not real world experience. I'm not minimizing the severity of phishing scams, but I do think it's funny that like I've never actually had to like have this be a thing. I don't know. It's pretty humbling when you when you get the corporate phishing one and then you get the call five minutes after you click the button. <laughs> From somebody yep. you work with is like you you failed. <laughs> we yep. we see that you we see that you click the button, so you failed. For people who have ever wondered why phishing is spelled with a ph instead of an f, um, and I guess it's because there used to be telecommunication nerds who would hack phone networks to get free calls back when calls used to cost a lot of money to dial long distance, and if you wanted to do things like party lines with multiple people, like phone technology used to kind of suck, and so they would hack into those systems with the early methods of social engineering, like phishing scams where they would call up to the AT&T data center and say, hey, I'm Technician Joe. I need help getting into blah, blah, blah system. What's today's rotating passcode? And it was, you know, the 80s or whatever, and that worked. And so those people were called phone freaks, and that was then turned to freaking with a PH, and the PH sort of stuck around as this thing came in. I had no idea that that was the history of why phishing is spelled with a PH. So yeah, we can blame 80s hacker movies, basically. Okay, the next scam. Online shopping scam. So scammers set up fake online stuff. This is pretty ambitious, right? This is a lot of work. They set up on fake online stores, listings to sell non-existent products. After receiving the payment, they either send counterfeit goods or nothing at all. Common uh, platforms for these scams include auction sites, social media marketplaces, etc., etc. This is uh, you see this. This is fairly common too, like with the uh, ticket resales. I know this. I noticed this right. around Stanley Cup time. People trying to sell tickets that they don't really have, and it's actually it's kind of sad in a way, right? Like you, you're sort of trusting, like, hey. Hey, you send me the money, I'll send you the tickets. And right, yeah, I, 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 I would never lose out to this scam. Yeah, this one's not going to trump me because too paranoid. It's it's a tricky, weird catch-22, right? Like the internet was originally sort of supposed to democratize the market by lowering that barrier of entry so your mom and pop shop could benefit from e-commerce and having online transactions. And isn't it great that the big box stores like Walmart and Target, which were coming into communities and putting the moms and pops out of business, now those moms and pops could compete online and have a way to interact and, and do get all the benefit. But now I don't know that you should trust your credit card information to anything other than like, I don't want to give Amazon more money and Jeff Bezos doesn't need anything, but Wayfair, Etsy, and Amazon are like, I don't know, like you shouldn't, can you just trust joesplumbing.com? Probably not. It's, it's it's a crappy, unless you're in the community and you know Joe and he hands you the business card with Joe's Plumbing on it, it's a, it's a sketchy world out there now. And actually it's just reinforcing that we're going to end up with five monopolies owning different pieces of the market like Amazon does now. And it's not good. It's bad for prices and uh, everything. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of stuff where the reason Amazon prices are low, the reason Walmart prices are low is because they don't pay American workers and uh, you're driving down wages of people in other places. And there's probably arguments that like milk should be $10 because you should pay the people who milk your cows more money in this economy and you can't afford that because you should be making $150,000 when you used to make $70,000 because of inflation and all of like there's a weird economic thing that is also part of this and the monopolies don't help with that either it's I, yeah it's a weird compounding situation and scams aren't making any of that any easier yeah so the next one is tech support scams and this one's this one's been in the news recently so scammers pose as tech support representatives from well-known companies like Microsoft and Apple and great time to be, to be posing as a Microsoft support uh, tech support <laughs> right and they'll often claim your computer is infected with malware uh, they often request remote access to your machine uh, to your system and may charge a fee for their services and and they're going to double triple whammy you here because they'll charge you for the services at the same time they're installing the malware and also <laughs> right. stealing your personal information so they're basically opening up a back door to your machine so they can continue stealing from you stealing while they're in there and they're charging you which is <laughs> right. just low that is low i think we can all agree the genius bar does suck <laughs> yeah that's terrible <laughs> No. 
But yeah, that's a really bad, yeah. Like, that's just, to your comment earlier about, like, do they feel remorse? Like, this is one of those ones that's like, yeah. you couldn't have just, like, for free installed the malware on my system. You also had to charge me forty nine ninety nine for the privilege of letting you install yeah. the malware on my system. That's just, that's rough. This one, I think, I, I won't say I'm impervious to any of these scams, but I think, I, I sure. don't think I'm going to get tripped up by this one ever. So I don't want to think that way. I don't want to get too comfortable. Sure. But I, can, I, I don't really understand. I can't really understand certain demographics. So the older Americans, sure. I can understand this one's a, a slam dunk. Um, but the younger... Well, especially when you bought your parents the Best Buy computer and you told them it came with Geek Squad. And yeah. so they knew that Geek Squad would be there to help them with all the stuff. Yeah, there's situations where you've actually correctly tried to help that person, but actually you're now setting them up for a perception of a scam exactly like this. Yeah. And this one's a good one. As we pointed out, there's a backdoor. So this is like the scam that can keep paying out, right? Because the people don't know. People often don't know that there's malware. So if, if somebody has a backed out to their machine, they're getting scammed over and over and it can take them a while to figure out, you know, how they're getting scammed. So, but I mean, that is the thing is like at this point, I just, I assume a phone call or an email is a scam. People I know are going to be in my contacts list. So I'm going to get caller ID telling me that they're calling. I'm going to get a text message from them more likely than a phone call or an email. And uh, I just, I, this is one of those things where like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta work with the people in your life to, uh, it feels crappy to be suspicious of phone calls and emails at this point. But if they're not from one of the, you know, 50 people that you know, don't do whatever it says. Like it's like I was saying earlier, I was pasting into the address bar and checking the URL. The really nice thing about having your password saved in your browser or in a browser extension or something is when you get sent to the website that's a scam, your password manager won't think that it's a valid website in your history. And therefore, if you don't get autocomplete saying, hey, do you want to enter in, you know, your username and password that I have saved for you? And you have to think like, oh, what's my password for this website? That's an, that's another benefit of the password managers is my password for most of my websites is a random string of numbers and letters generated by a password manager. If it doesn't get prompted for me, I couldn't enter it in anyway. So getting sent to fakeapplesupport.com, fakeapplesupport.com is not going to ever trick me into entering in my username and password because my password manager won't have that domain saved. There's stuff that you got to figure out how to get people in your life used to doing. I don't know. I feel like you're overthinking it. See, the hackers won't expect you to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just go simple. Right. No, that's absolutely what you should do. Sure. They're yeah. thinking sophisticated. <laughs> so they're not thinking of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. And yeah. then if you really want to throw them off, zero at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I remember for a while, Wi-Fi networks, if you wanted like the enhanced WPA2 security or whatever, your password had to be like 24 characters long. And so my password for my Wi-Fi for like five years was 0123456789, That's great. <laughs> to everyone listening, that is no longer my password for my Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's get to the big one, the uh, the investment scams. So this is fake investment opportunities, often promising high return with, with low risk, which I, I don't know if there is such a thing. High return, low risk. No. Um, Ponzi schemes, fraudulent initial coin offerings. That's a big one. That that must welcome make... to the scam of crypto. The scam <laughs> of crypto. Uh, and these the these are the scams that obviously we give the figures in the beginning. That's like four point six billion of the ten billion in twenty three was lost through investment scams. So investment Bonkers. fraud happens when uh, you're tricked into investing in money in stocks, bonds, notes, commodities, uh, commodities, currency, and especially real estate. So a real estate is is a popular one for the scam. A scammer may lie to you, give you fake information about a real investment, or they make up fake investment opportunities. And how do you, like, that's one of those, are you, like... <laughs> If I'm a, a an average person, one, it depends. This is where I'm curious about the stats of just like, are you asking me for $5,000 or are you asking me for $50,000? Because you're a different level of person. If you're being asked for $50,000, I hope you are, you have a a, a a person who is managing, helping you manage your money. I hope you have a HR, H&R block or your Chase Bank. Like, I hope somebody is in your life that is helping you with those kinds of things. So I, I have to imagine this has to be on the scale of like you 
you're 55 and you've got $5,000 that you didn't want to roll over from your IRA because of a company, blah, blah, blah. And someone comes up to you. I don't know. Like, this is the thing that I'm so puzzled by these situations. But let's say you are one of those people. What do you do? Are you Googling? Like, are you going to E-Trade and trying to look up the stock company? And yeah, like, I don't, what what would your resource be for a person to avoid this kind of stuff other than suspicion? (laughs) Yeah, because it it feels weird, right? Like, it, it feels like it can't be just a cold call or a cold <laughs> right. reach out where it's like hey is this Bernard you know we got an amazing opportunity for you right. like it feels like it has to be either this is like, it like that long... Anna Delvey who like scammed all of the New York high society with the whole thing yeah. she made it look like she was a rich person and yeah. so when she was asking for her investment in her new beauty whatever they were like oh right like yeah how does this happen so like the first three <laughs> calls I don't ask you for anything I'm just getting to know you and right. I'm, I'm sort of talking about like oh yeah you should come down to the yacht club you, you know, you fake say say a fake blaze out on Sundays, and and it's like you know you don't know. Or you cause... meet are, like is the scammer meeting you outside the golf club because they aren't a member, so they're like, yes. oh, I just finished up my nine rounds. Yeah, let's talk over you know here. <laughs> Because other than that, I can't imagine like somebody getting on the phone because this is almost like the Glenn Gary Glenn Ross scenario, right? Like never seen the movie. Ugh. I think our viewers have heard you pick on me about the skip 10, but you, there's so many good things you haven't seen. So, so it's, sure. it's picking up the phone and selling you a plot of land, right? Like, oh, we're only in town for one night and I'm the, the <laughs> vice president is here and you gotta get, you gotta sign up and we gotta get that check from you tonight. And right. urgency is key, right? Like they, they want the urgency right. because they gotta earn your trust and get that money as quickly as possible. And actually, you know, I've seen it. I've seen these people in these situations, not necessarily with the investment scam, but where they're pulling the trigger and it's like, Oh, you're in this you're in this state of anxiety or excitement because you you think you're winning here and I just don't know. Right. Like right. Uh, even my, my, my son was interviewing for a job recently and he said, Hey, take a look at this email. Does it look okay? And I'm like, No, it's a scam. <laughs> right. And he's like, How yep. do you know? And I was like, one, no one's gonna pay you that much money without a conversation and they're right. offering you a job through email to make that much money i was like yep. dude get real no and yep. i can tell you where this goes it goes to the point where they want you to buy some furniture and then they're gonna ask you for some money yep it under the guise of them paying for we're gonna it ship for you the you. laptop we're gonna give you a whole home rig yep. to work for us whole home but rig. we do just need you to pay the 500 bucks to get us the you know right and and as soon as they get that money they're gone and and right. that's the scam yeah it's crazy so the urgency is there the urgency does seem to be a thing like i think we talked about this in the crowd strike thing right like the ability for people to be rushed into these decisions and to be able to be in this situation if it is this is this great deal and if you don't get in on now i'm gonna have to move on to the next group of people but the same thing happens in in the other scams too of just like okay but your computer is currently leaking information to the internet i need you to give me access so i can shut it off that urgency is always a key thing to these things and it's like almost never is urgency actually a factor here almost always can you take a deep breath and it's worth the risk that the one time out of a hundred that you're you should actually have a sense of urgency and you don't it's worth the 99 times that you save yourself and take a step back and be like cool i'm gonna call you back i'm gonna take a minute right i'm and ladies and gentlemen, if if all else fails, pull the plug out of the wall because it won't be sending any data, right? <laughs> you know, because they do. They they, they want to raise your anxiety level because you make right. poor decisions in that state, right? You're worrying. Right. You're like, oh, you know, d- my data's flooding out there now. Thank right. goodness you called me out of the blue. Yep. You know, so and then off you go. And it's true. I think um, when we talk about the types of people who get hooked for the big numbers in these scams, it, it it's amazing to me because it, it, there's got to be a sense of like it's relative, right? Like to me, that's a lot of money that they're getting scammed. But for them, it's like, well, that's what I kept out this quarter to play with right. for my investments. There's got to right. be people who have that kind of money lying around, right? So, and those kind of people kind of deserve to get scammed. Oh. Like if you, <laughs> yeah, no, oh, ladies if and you, gentlemen, if he you doesn't have, mean that. he doesn't I, mean that. He does. I do. Does in 2024, it. I do. In 2024, if you have spare money to throw around and you can risk it on, you already know the stock market is a gamble. The stock market is Las Vegas for rich people. And if you're in a situation where you already, like, nothing is a guaranteed, there are no guaranteed wins. Anyone who tells you we have a guaranteed return on whatever is selling you something 
fake. They can tell you that, I mean, there are legitimate things where like, we can show you that this index has perf overperformed the stock market and tends to get you the 10% return, but that's not a promise. There's a, there is absolutely a situation in which you lose all of your money. You need to be okay with losing all of the money. It is like playing the roulette wheel. You do not have any direct control. You are not a board member of the company and you have no influence on the decisions of what's going on. You have to be okay with it. So I'm sorry if you have 10, 20, 50, $100,000 able to be given up to one of these scammers, you're doing your life badly. You should have financial planners. You should be talking to H&R Block. You should be talking to your bank. They have people who want to help you because you have that much money. No. <laughs> and no. actually, they could send the money to us, right, Kevin? We take the money. We would absolutely gladly take any of that money. We will produce an amazing series of warning PSAs for them so that they can know how to do it more intelligently in the future. It's already, you're all, you need to already be in the mindset of uh, the stock market is just gambling. It's just a legalized form of gambling. You all lost money in 2008. Your 401ks did not get the TARP bailout the way that everyone else got the TARP bailout. You have to already know that anytime you're in the stock market, there's no guaranteed return. And so if you're in a situation where you think the stock market is an option for you, you also need to be in a situation where you know that that money could disappear. And for most people, they're not in that situation. So for the ones who are and they're getting scammed, I have less sympathy. I think scammers are crap. All those scammers should. I don't know that they should. I, my liberal inclinations against jail. But there should be punishment for those scammers. But the people who can afford to swing the $10,000, you all, you all need to get smarter. What are you doing? How are you possibly getting bilked out of this in 2024? And as a conservative, I say just turn them into Silent Green and be done with it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, because they have no remorse, and 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 it's interesting what you're saying. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Like when you go into the markets, it's just that's the interesting thing, right? Like I'm not saying it's a scam, but it's a socially acceptable scam that the internet now has made it like what right. retail investors, where you go online and you're in Reddit, like in right. your fellow the whole GameStop thing, the whole yeah, GameStop, the GameStop thing was a bunch of people pump and dumps, like the the other home investors that you 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 think is your friend is pumping and dumping on the stuff that you're buying, so. <laughs> Yeah, don't get don't get caught out. Yeah, there's plenty of scams that don't have a name. So impersonation scams. So I think I think I don't know about being victim to an impersonation scam. This one's scary because of AI. Yeah. Yeah, this one's gonna get a whole lot scary, right? Scammers impersonate yep. someone you know, like a friend or family member, on social media or through email, and now by phone. By the way, that's what I've heard. Yeah. You might have told me that actually. Like. Yeah, there's AI that's now going and scanning TikTok and Instagram posts and figuring out how to sound like your grandson and your grandson will call you. It's terrifying. I don't, I don't have a grandson though, so they won't get me. Okay, then you're fine. Then that's not an issue and, <laughs> you know, your individual experience dictates how the rest of the world should operate. So you're good actually. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so what Kevin said, they claim to be a family. And that that has got to be, again, because the, depending on what they're saying to you, right? Like, hey, I'm in trouble. I'm overseas. I need you to wire me money. And you're thinking, right. what's that? Deborah? Was that our niece? Like she's in trouble right. in France and yeah. I'm going to send the $500 right now and then I'm going to get on the phone to my brother, right? Like and tell him like your daughter's in trouble. Right. So I do I, I do actually in my notes say that oh this one was um so not really an impersonation scam I guess. Well it, it sort of was. It was a, a text message I received from my CEO at the time asking me to buy three gift cards and it was just weird and this one stumped yep. me. This one stumped me for, for a few minutes because it was perfectly natural in a startup for the CEO to ask me to do right. something like that. Like, hey, you're an executive. Go buy a couple of cards for these people. Yep. And then, like, two minutes later, I was like, wait a minute. Like, what? wait a minute. That's <laughs> just it's a weird ask, right? Like, but it just felt right. natural. I'm like, actually, it's 90% weird and it's 10% natural. And then it was 1% natural and 99% weird. And, and yeah, right. really all they wanted to do was get get those cards and then they would ask me for the for the numbers of the cards and, and the scam is complete, right? So, right. and they're clever, right? They tell you you get multiple cards cards and certain value they want yep. to maximize without freaking you out right so it's affordable but maximize our, our take right but yeah the more sophisticated ones with ai that is going to be scary and i know it's going to make you hate ai even more but again i will point out <laughs> it's the humans who are scamming humans it's the humans who are burning the rainforest to power this gpus and draining california of all of its water to cool the gpus and killing the planet in order to use the ai to scam it so humans are responsible for both bad parts of it yeah i bet absolutely. you think like we have a problem with gun control in the country too right but it is a human who fires the gun right sure we don't have a big issue with uh, knife control or sledgehammer control because it's the access to and the 
severity of the weapon that matters. All humans can be bad. We should just not enable them to be worse. But if they didn't have a gun, they'd just use a truck, right? Crazy's crazy, right? Humans suck. Sure, but the... But the guy in Las Vegas who killed 50 people at the concert from the top of the hotel with a truck, like they killed that one woman in the Charlottesville protests and that was bad, but that was like one car. If that guy had had a gun, there'd have been 30 dead people. So no, the the mechanism matters. Yeah. Well, and I think the, the interesting thing about all of this, so I've had the same thing happen with my CEO and the CEO tried to, at a startup, um, allegedly was sending me a message asking me to do a thing. And I think it's interesting that both that and the AI grand son calling you is there is a human being there's a human being scanning through and going and finding like okay we had automation go scan all your linkedin profiles but it wasn't automation that went and actually pulled out and figured out okay great i'm noticing that phil is the ceo for kevin and so that's the link that i'm going to make and i'm going to send the message and like there are people involved in these things someone had to read the grandmother's facebook post being happy that her granddaughter got her driver's license and now two weeks later we know we can scam grandma and say hey I got into an accident can you you know Venmo me some money to help me take care of it right like automation and AI and all of those kinds of things as far as I can tell are not the things that are doing it there's still human beings doing it so maybe I'm reinforcing your point that it is this weird thing where we're putting so much of our information both business and personal out on the web for people to take advantage of in these situations and just imagine what's going to happen when you don't need the person anymore what's going to happen when the scammer has enough technology in place that they don't need the people in in, you know, India or China or wherever it is and, you know, going through and doing this manually? What happens when you write the automation script that can parse through all, everything and kick off the AI phone calls automatically? Like, this is only going yeah, to get it's worse. Yeah, only the, um, I can see a clash between the AI and the romance scams too, right? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, the that's going to be a problem. big one because yeah. lonely guys, AI. We'll get to the, I feel like you're jumping ahead. Oh, yeah, we'll get to the romance on the ones. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So of a common scam. So this is one of yours, right? You like this one? The romance scams. I don't know why you say I like this one. This is your entire topic. All of that text is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, you seem genuinely moved by the romance scam. So scammers create. Oh no, it's it's super sad, it's super right? Sad, like right? that is a, yeah, that yeah. is a, especially in our modern era of people already feel disconnected. Teens are already having less sex because the internet has made them more isolated from one another. Like, there's so many things where this is already a thing. Int- intimacy is already difficult for people, and now the online world has made it more likely to be difficult. For for people like I feel genuinely really bad for people who get caught up in this type of stuff although when I, when I'm reading the description here it just sounds like marriage because it says scammers create fake profiles on dating sites or social media to establish relationships with victims over time they gain their trust and ask for money often claiming it's for an emergency or travel expenses did you really <laughs> just do a take my wife please joke <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like dating. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but dating, you at least meet the person in real life. I mean, that is the thing, right? Is like there are plenty of, I know plenty of people who met online and like genuinely fell for each other because they were having truly amazing back and forth conversations and really finding out inf- stuff about each other. And they didn't meet for like a year. And okay, that, I'm, I'm cool. Like if that's what works for you emotionally, that's great. But after three months, if that person asks you for $10,000, don't give them $10,000. Right? Like, there's a degree of at what point do you need to actually meet a person in real life? I'm just saying, sometimes the scam is just the photo that they used on their social media site. (laughs) Sure. When you meet them in real life. Right, exactly. Uh, it's my it's my 80s yeah. April Fool's Day photo yeah. versus my actual, there's gray in the beard, yeah. Did you have to use one from when you were like in college? That's that's not honest. <laughs> right, exactly. Anyway, so, so an X is terrible. X is horrible. Like yep. so many, I get so many DMs and it's all bot accounts and it's all the same. It's the same crap. And I don't even know what they want because it's like, what do you want? That's the thing that's never made sense to me. Those bot accounts on Twitter are the same as like, I will get random. So I have like a Hotmail account that I've had for 15 years that I guarantee, like I use whenever I know I'm going to get spammed by giving this Hotmail account out. And the random weird emails that are like, hey, Kevin, it's Mary. Are you still in Seattle? What is the point? Like, is that the start of an attempted romance scam that I'm going to be like, oh, Mary, my college girlfriend. Great to hear from you again. I'm like, what is the point of the Twitter bot sending those random weird things? Or yeah, you'll get like random 
random follows and likes from yeah. anime girls and their username is always like blah blah eight four four seven two five six seven, like random string of numbers yeah. at the end like you are a bot elon claims all of his crappy changes to twitter are to get rid of the bot problem you are not you your only revenue comes from bots stop lying to everybody like you are now a bot platform yeah it, they are they're bots and and i sometimes again because i i'm fascinated by scammers and the, the psyche of them right so are you replying to weird anime girls yeah so i get into conversations with these people right like what do you like no let's cut the shit. let's let's get to the let's get to what is your goal yeah what is your goal just be honest right like, don't i'm saving you time and that's got to be worth something <laughs> tell right. me what your scam is and i'll tell you where it needs adaptation right like great good I'm gonna okay help you get better at this so i've had a couple of conversations over the years with scammers i got one person i assume it was a guy where you know it was very complimentary of his creativity on the scam and so i said to him i was like look you could have a really good future and it could be two years away right like you go take a certification for some cloud tech and a person like you <laughs> who is creative and inventive will climb right you're gonna find ways to climb sure and so we go into a, we go into a conversation for a, a, probably like a week and a half two weeks of back and forth and i was like yeah you should take a look at this and take a look at that so I'm probably a local scammer somewhere fairly close right but sure but yeah this this one the romance scam i don't this is the one that i understand the least because i i i know what god gave me right <laughs> <laughs> like I know when I see their picture and I see myself in the mirror, <laughs> sure. that's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> because who's just going to reach out to you online no matter how you look and just right. be like hey we were meant to be together let me scam you on whatsapp right there's no way anybody should fall for that no well and that's the weird that is the thing that is so my experience in like the dating world is there legitimately are you cannot possibly judge a book by its cover and understand what somebody like likes what their preferences are all of those kinds of things so unexpectedly hot people have have been interested in me and I'm like art what okay cool I'm not gonna judge it but they're like actual people in real life that I like can verify are a human being that we are having an actual right like interaction but that is the pernicious thing about this we have this culture where you have a bunch of people telling mainly men and boys you are you know women won't sleep with you nothing's available to you you are alone all of this kind of stuff we have a culture that is reinforcing this isolation that people feel and therefore making them more likely to be like oh is this a sign of interest I'm not seeing from the girls in my real life and somebody showing me this interest online your people are emotional men don't want to admit that they have emotions and feelings but that's the only way that this scam works is recognizing that men are lonely and they want emotional attachment and they want that opportunity and by not allowing themselves to have that in real life they are more susceptible to those things in the virtual world and it's just it's sad it's stop listening to the what's that guy's name Andrew Tate and all of those toxic Joe Rogan bros stop listening to them telling you women are just objects for you to have sex with like go talk to a real human girl and find out that there are nerdy girls there are sporty girls there are like there's so many types of people you could go and have an interaction with and find that real opportunity you shouldn't get scammed by these things but we've built a culture that enables these scams it's really sad there's also AI too they can go talk to AI right? no they shouldn't do that it's the exact same thing but worse it's empty calories it's even worse <laughs> No. Calories. I love that. Yeah, no. And and what people need to realize on these romance camps too is like when they do get you to that second, it's a second location, right? You never want to get taken to the second location. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. No, the first of all, in general, like you, if you are in the parking lot and you are actually getting attacked yeah. by someone, don't let them get you in the trunk and get to the second location. Yeah, second you are location. fully done. <laughs> so yeah, it's bad. the same on the internet. As soon as they get you from X to WhatsApp or Telegram, it's already yep. too late. They've got you. And and there's, there's teams, right? So there's one person person on the romance side who's hitting you up and they're good at flirting or not they're actually terrible at it <laughs> right yeah. um, but so is the person that they're going after so you have no yes, basis to yeah. compare to right that's the problem and so you're moving through a factory line this is how good they are right like there's a group of them and then once you move to that secondary location now you have the next person so there's, there's right. a whole team of these people who can outlast you right they can they'll they'll be yep. back and 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 at it and and it's impossible to track these people right so right. once they get you their second location 
as soon as they get you to, you know, hey, you can pay and you know, we can meet, I can fly into town and all these promises and promises and your credit card yep. eventually comes into it mm-hmm. and they've got you and they, they disappear without a trace, right? So and there's cold. degrees of this too, right? There's there's cases where this is just any dude listening to this who you think you've chatted to a porn star on OnlyFans. No, you haven't. <laughs> no, you haven't. That's a sassy gay dude sitting behind a laptop on his, you know, veranda somewhere pretending to be a blonde with big boobs. No, you haven't. It's it. There's degrees of it which are like acceptable and not acceptable. But yeah, it's <laughs> you're you're almost guaranteed not talking to the person you think you're talking to. It's super trusting when you think about it now. Like it's probably natural, right? We think like the, everybody's so trusting of the internet. But you sit in there. It's basically <laughs> like writing a piece of paper, sliding it under a door, and then a piece of paper comes out like 30 <laughs> seconds later with like a reply. Right. And and you're thinking to yourself like, but on the internet, guys <laughs> just immediately jump to oh. Five foot six, blonde. Right. It, yep. It's like, come on. Yeah. No, I, uh, and that's the thing is, I feel bad because there are absolutely genuine situations in which if you are on Hinge or Tinder or whatever the current dating app of the day is, there are legitimately people who want to have a conversation with you, but they are nervous. They're a little shy and geeky and they don't want to do it. And so you you should be open to the month long conversation with that person, getting to know each other a little bit before you're trying to find a way to go have coffee or a dinner or something like that. So it's it's a weird balancing act of like there are legitimate cases where this is actually real and knowing the difference between those types of things, knowing that it's like the perfect looking woman on X versus the random person that you swiped on Hinge. I don't know. Like there's there's a balancing act. You got to find the right way to do this. And also just don't give them money. Just never give them money. Make, make sure that you've met the person in real life before money comes into it. That's the thing I don't understand. It's just like that's why the hookup apps are so easy because either you show up and we hook up or you don't and <laughs> like you can meet the person like you need to meet the person at some point for this to become ever financial and that's your joke about wives and girlfriends but like legitimately i'm gonna pay for a thing for you because we've been seeing each other for three months in real life (laughs) see humans why you hold on to why you have any faith in us (laughs) at all because i i mean i'm talking about the victims too never mind the perps the perps (laughs) are the evil pieces i'm just talking about the victims we are just we're doomed. Doomed. Yeah. Doomed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Charity scams. Charity scams. Who would have thought it? And and these are often political, right? Scammers creating fake charity websites, contacting individuals through email and social media again, particularly common after natural disasters or tragedies, trying to solicit donations. This one's cruel. This one, you should absolutely be turned to Soylent Green if you do these. <laughs> I'm glad to know you believe that Trump should be turned into Soylent Green. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely been some dubious, like, uh, I get a lot of junk mail, like, by the bobblehead and the toys. (laughs) There's some real dubious products coming out. Um, Especially the people who claim to have terminal illnesses, or worse, they're representing somebody who's down and out, and then pocketing the money instead of handing it to the person, because they're double scamming. Scamming the donors, scamming the person who's in need. Yeah, I know GoFundMe has, like, things in place to try to be able to tell you, like, we verified this is the whatever but anytime especially recently i've seen like those help us get this family out of palestine so we can get them to you know safety and away from everything that's going on and i'm like did gofundme somehow validate a person who currently doesn't have internet access in you know the gaza strip like i i'm super worried about like those might be legitimate and i feel bad if i'm telling people not to donate to a legitimate cause but how do you validate that kind of stuff you're dependent on a company like gofundme to to have done all of that yeah it's it's a sketchy world and no names mentioned on the political side, but what one one politician, <laughs> one politician, uh-huh. apparently their campaign took in a quarter of a billion dollars in donations from supporters that would go to the election defense fund. I wonder who that could be hmm. to pay for legal fees. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's impossible to figure out where all that money goes, right? Well, especially because the Supreme Court has fully gutted our ability to understand where money goes in politics in general. So super PACs, and you don't have to disclose your donors. You don't have to disclose how you're you're paying for all of this there are still a couple of rules on the book so the fact that trump admitted that he he sent a text message 
message to one of his super PAC founders and ask them to do something, that is still illegal. There are still things that you can't do. But for the most part, it's hard to know where your money is going to go. Trump absolutely can tell you in the email, it's going to help us, you know, fight the not real election fraud. And he's going to spend it on his legal fees because he raped a woman and was guilty of 34 counts of uh, felony uh, financial fraud. So Allegedly. No, no, no. Those are legal. No, no, no. Those are fully <laughs> judges have ruled he is a rapist and a 34 count felon. So we can say that without worry of libel lawsuits. Oh, okay. I wasn't even. Yeah. I mean, maybe I was talking about Trump. I didn't say. I just said a recent <laughs> politician. No, but... this is right. Exactly. Yeah. No, but I mean, this is the this is the goofy thing is like you should absolutely you should be mindful of where you're sending your money. I think oh, this yeah. is why also our entire political system is broken. The fact that campaigns now take two years and a billion dollars at minimum. Like it's great that you know Kamala raised three hundred million dollars in July or whatever, but that is an insane unnecessary amount of money. They like I have issues with the parliamentary system, but at least a bunch of European countries with parliaments, you call an election on like May first, and you have the election by middle of July. Like these six week campaigns, the fact that Kamala is running a hundred day campaign and no one has a problem with it, it's working pretty well so far. Knock on wood. We don't need these insane long campaigns. The primaries should be from like June to August, and the primary and the general campaign should be like September to November. We it's it's so expensive. It's such a waste of money. It's there's so many problems. You know how many homeless people you could you could house with three hundred million dollars? I get that we need to defeat Trump and not let the fascists take over, but also we're spending our money poorly in this country. <laughs> Lottery and sweep, uh, sweepstakes scams. So this one's actually one of my favorites. Like not favorites because it's more exciting. Yeah, I just I found this one interesting. I, I don't know why because I think maybe it's because it's a marriage made in heaven. Like the people who are getting scammed are playing the lottery, so they're looking for the the windfall. It's not like an investment <laughs> right. scam where you're like in it for like, oh, I could be in this for two years and then I'll flip it. These people are like, I'm buying a ticket. And I think on Thursday I'm going to be a millionaire. It's it's that sort of demographic. So this one's an interesting one. So lottery sweepstakes for competitions they never entered. So to to claim the prize, often they're asked to pay taxes or fees up front, but the prize never materializes. There's a reason why there's a legal distinction between a raffle and a sweepstakes because a raffle is gambling because you must put money in and therefore raffles are basically illegal like anytime you've gone to like a local community event and the church does a raffle technically they shouldn't be technically that's gambling and I'm not sure the church is allowed to no one's going to go bust the church for doing a raffle for a thing you're trying to raise money for the PTA or whatever it is but that is technically gambling right versus a sweepstakes you can have an entry option where money is exchanged but you're not legally allowed to require money for the sweepstakes entry. So that's where, why there's like people out there who will go and enter into a bunch of sweepstakes and there's convoluted things where you have to like print out a postcard and enter in your information and mail in the sweepstakes entry. But s- legally, a sweepstakes has to offer you the option to not pay them money to enter. And so you can go and click on the terms and find the little web form or the postcard that you can print out. Anyone who really wants to, you can enter in any sweepstakes you see because legally they can't ask you for money. They have to give you an option not to do that. Otherwise, it's a raffle. Otherwise, it's gambling. So yeah, there are there are legal protections in place so that technically, if you really don't want to, you can find a way to avoid getting scammed by any sweepstakes out there. So yeah, it's something to be mindful of. I don't think it's usually worth it. Like if you're entering in a sweepstakes, it's one thing if you're entering in the sweepstakes and you lose. It's another thing if someone randomly calls you and says, hey, that sweepstakes you don't remember entering, <laughs> you won it. That's bad. That's a scam. You've never, you have, to, anyway. Yeah, this is starting to remind me of my father dragging us all to the timeshare pitch so he could get his free gold clock. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Okay. Uh, harassment. I mean, this one, especially with the Olympics recently, is uh, really bad. Why? What? What? I didn't watch much of the Olympics. What was harassing about the Olympics? What? I mean. At minimum, there was the entire outrage over a female boxer who is female and she looks kind of mannish. So they all assumed she was trans and started saying that a man beats a woman in boxing and she's now suing J.K. Rowling and Elon Musk for defamation. I don't love that the idea that being called trans is defamation, but the yeah, the online harassment during the Olympics for a number of people has been pretty atrocious. I think the, is it the IOC, didn't they, they 
they screwed them basically, right? With some test. Yeah, there's there's weird things that happen where you you absolutely there are women who naturally have yeah. higher levels of testosterone, and those kinds of arbitrary things are totally worthless. But that kind of thing to me is like one should be private because it should be to me it's medical, right? So <laughs> right, right, exactly. The, the people who need to know should know, right? And yeah. then two, if you're you you must know how controversial that is going to sound. That you, you know in the current climate. And it's arbitrary. It It's a thing that is designed to punish specific types of people, usually black women in most of the cases. And no one's... Michael Phelps is a genetic freak. And no one's bothered that Michael Phelps randomly has the gene combination that gives him an insane breath control, insane metabolism, insane arms, you know, wingspan to do all of these things. If we're talking about fairness in whether or not a woman has slightly elevated testosterone and that makes her thighs four percent more likely to run faster then michael phelps should be excluded we should be finding some genetic average and saying if you are more than 20 percent outside of the genetic average you can't compete in sport that's crappy too so no none of that's good let's give some advice right let's tips yes. to avoid the online scams yeah so i think we we sort of talked about this in between all of this be skeptical of someone coming to you with something that's too good to be true you you did not win a boat. You do not have a thing. The Nigerian prince is not ready to send over his fortune to you. All of those things are too good to be true. And that even includes, it's too good to be true that someone noticed that your computer was doing something bad and they're here to help. You should take a step back and validate and verify these kinds of things. Make sure that you know what's going on. I think the number of uh, situations where if everyone just took a deep breath, said, great, can you give me the number to call you back at? Google, I mean, Google is fully in humidified everything so I don't know that you can actually do this but there are cases where you should take that just take a beat realize that you should actually verify that this is the phone number that the bank would be calling you from you did actually enter that sweepstakes when you were at the PTA meeting last month make sure that these things are real and that's harder these days because Google isn't great I don't know if my recommendation is DuckDuckGo or what but don't go to Bing uh, but like the ability for you to, to take that deep breath that urgency is not there I think it's also one of those common things like at least I've noticed banks and some other systems that do two-factor authentication and text you the code. The text now says a human being will never ask you for this code, so that's good, right? Don't share out those authentication codes, those passwords. Make sure you know who you're talking to. That two-factor authentication, you should always turn on. It's a super big pain in the ass, but it absolutely will save you when your phone has to get notified that someone else is trying to log into your account. Two-factor authentication, sure, it stops working when the mugger takes your <laughs> purse and your phone, and now they have access to everything thing sure but that's not the most common scenario for this it kind of sucks i'm kind of in, i'm not quite in the same boat as the credit card people who don't check their credit card transactions but i'm definitely not as mindful of the credit card balance looks roughly like what i think it should be i'm not i'm probably the wrong person to give you the advice that you should be checking your bank statements and your credit card statements to make sure that there's not little five dollar ten dollar twenty dollar transactions here and there that people are taking advantage of but you probably should and to your point earlier i would hope your bank your credit card company mint.com is no longer a thing because TurboTax shut it down for some reason but like there were tools that used to try and notice that kind of stuff for you so yeah I don't know anything else we should talk about like I think there's things individuals should do and then I also think that there's people if you work in software there's also stuff that you should do but on an individual level what else I think we've touched on a bunch of good things as we've talked through each of these topics yeah and I think we should also point out like if you are scammed I believe you can go to the the FBI.gov FBI.gov and the FTC mm. um, okay. both have both have services online so if you if you do feel like you are the victim of a, a, a identity theft or a scam then check out bi.gov and um, cool. I know we people probably feel like their complaints are going to go into a pile of other cases and that is accurate but still on the still off chance it. yeah still report right. it right because exactly. if you can prevent it happening to somebody else then that's that's obviously a good thing but so if you work in software and you're, you don't want to be a vector of attack, you don't want to have your software get compromised or enable people to get scammed. I do think that there's some just basic principles that not everyone seems to think are important. So make sure that your users have two-factor authentication as an option to get into your apps. And I know sometimes that sucks. Sometimes that requires you need a partner with an SMS vendor. You need a partner with a, a you know, token authenticator app uh, solution. But I do think like there was recent news, like last month, Snowflake had 
the customer passwords compromised because just one person didn't have two-factor authentication on their user accounts. And so that one person was the only, was the way in to find a bunch of Snowflake customer passwords. So two-factor authentication saves you, uh, is actually relatively good and secure. So if you have an app, does your app have two-factor authentication? You should be pushing for that. I also think, I was saying earlier, it's good that the text messages are starting to say, a human being will never ask you for this code. Like you, you should make sure your software is clear with people. The forgot password link will not ask you to enter a new password. It will generate one for you and then you'll be taken somewhere and that screen will do things with you to get the new password. Like make it clear to people what the expected steps are so when the scammer tries to get in the way and add step 3A to get them the information, people have those expectations that that's not actually how it should work. And then, yeah, don't do resetmypassword.com and your main app is at mycompany.com. Like make sure that things like the URLs are very clear. It does sometimes suck depending on the size of your organization getting things like subdomains set up and getting all the DNS provisioning but it's worth the effort. It's worth making sure that like password.myco.com is the place that I'm sending them to and you can verify that myco.com is the URL that I go to to do all my apps. Those kinds of things matter and I know that it's more set up and it's more annoying to sometimes do all of that especially if you're using a third party vendor to help you with all of that but I don't know like I've been in this software world long enough that I know how to like I've written DNS entries to get all that kind of set up it's dumb and boring and annoying but kind of necessary what else should we tell people about as you're thinking about making sure that your software isn't helping scammers scam other people yeah i just <laughs> i'm plugging from the internet basically <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sure. It, I, I just wonder if in the future, if it's going to be like we have like a little budget monthly, which is like, oh, yeah, that ransomware kid got me again. Just take my the, electric bill, my groceries, the rents yeah. and $40 yeah. for online scams. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us on this episode of Acceptance Criteria. To read articles that we've written on similar topics to the ones we talk about here, head over to the blog at acceptancepod.com. Also, tell your friends if you like the show and that they should check it out. Some of the best podcasts out there grow by word of mouth, and we'd much appreciate it. And a friendly reminder that we're always interested in hearing questions directly from you, our listeners, for our segment, User Stories. If you've got a scenario you'd like help with, whether it's working with an engineering or product team member, trying to figure out how to solve an agile process problem, or you just can't understand why your favorite app updated everything and it's now terrible, we're here to talk it through with you. You can send those questions to acceptancepod at gmail.com or submit them on the Discord and the User Stories channel and we might be able to help on a future episode. And we're happy to keep it anonymous so no one can trace it back to you if you end up talking to a coworker or something. For now, I'm Kevin Thomas Uland and you can find me on most apps at K Thomas Uland. That's U-L-L-A-N-D. And I'm Andrew Greener and you can find me on most apps at Criteria Greener. That's G-R-E-I-N-E-R. And this has been Acceptance Criteria. Thank you for listening and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.